What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to show you guys how we can render out 360 degree videos out of Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. And before we get started, I wanna show you guys the plugin on the marketplace that I'm gonna be using for this tutorial in case you guys wanna follow along. It's called Camera 360 by Ivan. He actually supplied it to me, so big shout out to Ivan so I could do a tutorial and showing you guys how we could use this inside of Unreal Engine. And the reason I like this plugin is, let me show you the documentation that comes from from Epic and so I'll leave this in the description below if you guys want to follow this one like Unreal they do have a panoramic render built inside of Unreal Engine but I felt that it was kind of complex to get going like if I scroll through this tutorial you see all the blueprinting and everything that you have to do here in which I come from a Cinema 4D background. I'm used to be able to just click on the camera, click spherical render and call it a day. And so this is a lot more than what I really want to get into. And so when I discovered this plugin here, this is kind of pretty much just drag and drop into Unreal Engine and you could call it a day. And so let's get started by opening up Unreal Engine and this scene that I have right here. So if you go to the marketplace, you go under free and it's under marketplace collection but this is what i'm going to be using here so if you want to follow along with this as well you just click add the project and you should be all set so i'm going to close this out and the first thing i'm going to do when i'm inside of my scene here is i'm actually going to add in a camera so i'm going to come over to place actors just type in camera and i'm just going to grab the first one that i see here and i'm going to grab and drag this into my scene and i'm just going to find like a good place to put this camera here so now that we have our camera in here, the next step we want to do is animate this camera in which I'm going to make a sequencer so that I can actually add some keyframes to this. And so to do that, I'm actually going to come over here to cinematics and just add level sequence. And I'm just going to leave it at the default name here. I'm going to click save. And now down here in the bottom, you see we have our timeline down here. I'm actually going to make this 60 frames per second. I just like working in that workflow. And so now what I'm going to do is click back on my camera. I'm going to take my camera actor and just drag it in here and you can see that it makes a camera cuts track it makes our camera down here and all we have to do is add some keyframes so i'm going to drag this up a little bit so we can see it a little bit better and you see we have a transforms tab here so if i scroll this down you can actually see we have location rotation and scale so i'm going to make a keyframe at the beginning here and then i'm just going to drag this all the way to the end which is about 300 frames and then I'm just going to move my camera a little bit. So let's say I want to just do like a camera shot moving on to this little lid chair, something like that. And then come back down here to location, click this. And now we have our keyframe in there. So if I go back and then I hit play, you can see down here in the camera actor, we're actually moving and let me make it big screen so we can actually see it. So I'm going to come through my camera actor here in perspective, move back here, click play. And now you can see we have a nice camera movement. And if I just want it to be consistent instead of ramp up and ramp down. So I'm just going to select both of these keyframes, right click, click on linear. And then if I go back and play this, now there's no ramp up or ramp down or anything. It's just a constant movement in here. Okay, so next we want to bring in our 360 camera, which if I come back over to content browser, and then if I click on content, if you downloaded that plugin, you should have a folder here called Camera 360. So if I double click on this, I wanna come over to the folder that says Blueprints. So I'm gonna double click on this one. And down here, there's only two objects that we actually need to bring in. So I'm gonna make these a little bit larger so we can see these better here. And so the two things that I wanna bring in is this one right here. So it's camera underscore point underscore 360. And then this one right here, camera underscore rec underscore 360. So I'm going to hold control, select both of these, and I'm just going to bring these into my scene here. So now you see we have a little green box and that's actually coming from the camera rec here. So if I come up to my raw outliner, type in camera like so. So I just have my cameras and everything up in here. Then if I click on this, I'm going to eject myself from the current camera so that I can navigate around my scene a little bit. So if I click on this one called camera rec underscore 360, I'm going to move this around in my scene and I'm just going to move it out of place. So we're not actually going to see it inside of the render. So as long as this is inside of the scene somewhere, it should be fine. But the one caveat is like if you do have it within your field of view, you are going to see that little green box inside of your render there. So just kind of hide it somewhere where we're not going to see it. 
And then right here for this one, the camera point 360, this is actually gonna be the 360 camera that we're gonna to use to render out. And so I wanna put this into the same exact position of our camera that we just animated. So if I have this selected here and I come down into my details panel and right here under default, you should see a little tab here that says target all transform. So I'm gonna click on the eye clicker here and then I'm just gonna find the camera inside of my scene and select it and we should see our camera the 360 camera jumped to the position of our moving camera. So if I click this, now you saw that it jumped over there. And to be able to get this to, you know, have the same movement of our animated camera, I'm just gonna select my 360 camera, click and drag it underneath our moving camera. And this way it's gonna take on the properties of our moving camera. So if I come back and let's say, come down to my sequencer. And if I click play, you can see we're looking through the 360 camera right now and it's actually moving with our original camera. So let me move back here. And so from here, we're basically almost done. There's just a few more steps that we're gonna to have to click on to be able to render this out inside of the new movie queue. I have my scene here as we were alluding to before. We actually have our camera, our 360 camera moving in here. But if I click on perspective and click on camera actor, you see that we don't see it in 360 degrees yet. And that's because we just have to make a few more adjustments here. And so if I come down here to my sequencer and I click on camera cuts, if I right click on this and then come over to edit section, right here where it says is active, I'm actually going to check mark this off. And then if I come up here in the top and just click the play button, you can see that we're now looking through it at 360 degrees, but there's no animations to it. So if I click on stop here at the top, and then if I come over here and my raw outliner, type in sequence, just to bring up my sequencer down here in the details panel. If I scroll down to playback, you see autoplay. So I'm gonna click on this, then I'm gonna click play. And now you can see our camera movement working at 360 degrees here. So now that we have everything worked out here, the next solution is how do we render this out for 360 degrees? And so if I come over here to my window, come down to cinematics, come over to render movie queue. I'm gonna click on this and then under render, I'm just gonna find the sequence that I was using before. And before I do anything else, I'm just gonna click on this little save button down here just to make sure I have my scene saved out like so. All right, cool. So I'm gonna come over here to where it says unsave config. And for this, I'm just gonna use a JPEG. And then for output, I'm gonna actually find a folder that I wanna save it at. And so I believe I have a 360 folder here. Yeah, 360 renders. I'm gonna select this folder. And then for the resolution, I'm actually gonna make this 5760 by, let's say 2880. And I'm gonna keep it monoscopic just for this tutorial, but you can render out stereo. I'll show you how to do that after this render. And then everything else, I'm just pretty much gonna leave the way that it is. And then if you want a sharper render, if you come over here to settings, we can always add anti-aliasing like so. And then under temporal settings, you can set this up. The higher the number, the longer the render is gonna take. So maybe let's just select two for right now. And then I'm gonna click accept. And so now we have everything set up in here. So there's one last step that we need to take before we render this out. So if I come down here to camera cuts, I'm actually going to fold this up because I need to click and drag in my 360 degree camera inside of my sequencer. So if I come to Royal Outliner, type in camera, I'm gonna take this one here, the camera underscore rec underscore 360, click and drag that into my scene here. And I'm gonna make sure I'm at the beginning of my sequence here. And then I'm gonna click back on camera cuts right here where it says plus camera. I'm gonna come down here under existing binding. So I'm gonna select this one here. This is camera underscore rec underscore 360. Select that. And now if we come over to our render queue, we should be able to render this out. So I have everything already all set up. I'm gonna click render. And now you can see we're actually looking through that 360 camera. It just takes a second for it to warm up. It's going a little bit slower because I added some anti-aliasing to it. Like I said, the higher the anti-aliasing, the longer it's gonna render, but this is still pretty fast feedback, especially for the resolution that we're rendering at. All right, so that took a few minutes to render out. So let me come over to my folder and find where I have that sequence rendered out to. So if I come over here, 360 renders, you can see that we have our render all rendered out here now instead of a sequence. So I'm going to delete this first one if I double click on it, the first frame is always a little bit funky, but from there, you can see that we got 
a render pretty good here. So I'm just going to delete out the first couple of frames. So let me see. I'm starting to see some glitches, which I never saw before. But let's say frame 11. I'm going to delete up to frame 11 there. And then I'm going to make this so that we can actually see this in 360 degrees. And so if you have the Adobe Creative Suite, if I come over to Adobe Media Encoder. And the reason I'm doing this is just so I can make a quick time out of it. So if I click the plus button, I'm going to click on this and right here where it says file sequence, make sure I have this selected, click on open. And I know you guys are probably asking like, hey, I know we can actually render out quick times out of Unreal now, but sometimes those files are extremely large. Like I did use the Apple ProRes in my testing. It came out to be a couple of gigs, which was just way too big. And so I found that using a sequence and then use a media encoder to make a quick time worked out a lot better for me. So now that we have media encoder opened up here, I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to render at maximum depth. And then I'm just going to do VBR two pass. Just going to drag this all the way up for target bit rate and then this is the most important one here where it says vr video we want to make sure that this is selected and since i rendered out mono i want to make sure that it's mono here and then at the very bottom here let me scroll this down a little bit right here where it says use maximum render quality i want to click this on and then i'm just going to click ok so i'm going to start this up and this should just take a few moments to render out here all right, so it looks like our render is complete here. So I'm just going to go back to the folder and I'm going to look for that quick time that was just created. So I'm going to double click on this. And now you can see we actually have a 360 playback here that we can spin around inside of our scene. And I'm just using the Windows player right here. So this one actually has 360 playback in it. But if you're on Windows 10, if you double click it, it should automatically recognize that it's a 360 file. And now we could just play it through like so. So that's how we render out monoscopic, but let me show you real quick how we could render out stereo. So I'm back in Unreal Engine right now. Let me close out my render queue. So if I click on the camera underscore rec underscore 360, if I come down here into the details panel, if I look down here right under projection, you can see that we have models 360 plane. And so right now I just have it selected on mono. But if I come down here, we have a couple of different options for stereo. So I would click on 360 stereo here. And then inside of my render queue, if I come back over to window, cinematics, movie render queue, click on this. So from here, it's pretty much just setting up your resolution. So if I click on output right now, like if you want it to be stereo, you would just match the beginning number. So you do 5760 and then click accept. And now let me render this out and we should see it here inside the render port. And now you can see we have our render going. It's going to stereo top and bottom down here. So this is if you want to do a stereo 3D render out of Unreal Engine. Of course, it's going to take a little bit longer, but you can see I'm already up to 8% and we've only been here for a few seconds. So if you guys want to do stereo, you have that option as well. So hopefully this helped you guys out. I know this was requested by a few people. This is pretty much the easiest way that I figured out how to do it. Just go to that marketplace and download that plugin by Ivan. It's well worth it if you're working with 360. And so if this did help you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe. Give me a big thumbs up. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care and thank you guys.